Aladdin Story Part 5 Aladdin descended the steps and, opening the door, found the three halls just as the African magician had described. He went through them with all the precaution the fear of death could inspire, crossed the garden without stopping, took down the lamp from the niche, threw out the wick and the liquor, and, as the magician had desired, put it in his waistband. But as he came down from the terrace, seeing it was perfectly dry, he stopped in the garden to observe the trees, which were loaded with extraordinary fruit, of different colors on each tree. Some bore fruit entirely white, and some clear and transparent as crystal, some pale red, and others deeper, some green, blue, and purple, and others yellow. In short, there was fruit of all colors. The white were pearls, the clear and transparent, diamonds, the deep red, rubies, the paler, balas rubies, the green, emeralds, the blue, turquoises, the purple, amethysts, and the yellow, topazes. Aladdin, ignorant of their value, would have preferred figs, or grapes, or pomegranates, but as he had his uncle's permission, he resolved to gather some of every sort. Having filled the two new purses his uncle had bought for him with his clothes, he wrapped some up in the skirts of his vest, and crammed his bosom as full as it could hold. Aladdin, having thus loaded himself with riches of which he knew not the value, returned through the three halls with the utmost precaution, and soon arrived at the mouth of the cave, where the African magician awaited him with the utmost impatience. As soon as Aladdin saw him, he cried out, Pray, uncle, lend me your hand, to help me out. Give me the lamp first. Replied the magician, It will be troublesome to you. Indeed, uncle, answered Aladdin, I cannot now, but I will as soon as I am up. The African magician was determined that he would have the lamp before he would help him up, and Aladdin, who had encumbered himself so much with his fruit that he could not well get at it, refused to give it him till he was out of the cave. The African magician, provoked at this obstinate refusal, flew into a passion, threw a little of his incense into the fire, and pronounced two magical words, when the stone which had closed the mouth of the staircase moved into its place, with the earth over it in the same manner as it lay at the arrival of the magician and Aladdin. This action of the magician plainly revealed to Aladdin that he was no uncle of his, but one who designed him evil. The truth was that he had learned from his magic books the secret and the value of this wonderful lamp, the owner of which would be made richer than any earthly ruler. And hence his journey to China. His art had also told him that he was not permitted to take it himself, but must receive it as a voluntary gift from the hands of another person. Hence he employed young Aladdin, and hoped by a mixture of kindness and authority to make him obedient to his word and will. When he found that his attempt had failed, he set out to return to Africa, but avoided the town. Lest any person who had seen him leave in company with Aladdin should make inquiries after the youth. Aladdin being suddenly enveloped in darkness, cried, and called out to his uncle to tell him he was ready to give him the lamp, but in vain, since his cries could not be heard. He descended to the bottom of the steps with a design to get into the palace, but the door, which was opened before by enchantment, was now shut by the same means. He then redoubled his cries and tears, sat down on the steps without any hopes of ever seeing light again, and in an expectation of passing from the present darkness to a speedy death. In this great emergency he said, there is no strength or power, but in the great and high God, and in joining his hands to pray he rubbed the ring which the magician had put on his finger. Immediately a genie of frightful aspect appeared, and said, What wouldst thou have? 
I am ready to obey thee. I serve him who possesses the ring on thy finger, I and the other slaves of that ring. At another time Aladdin would have been frightened at the sight of so extraordinary a figure, but the danger he was in made him answer without hesitation, Whoever thou art, deliver me from this place. He had no sooner spoken these words than he found himself on the very spot where the magician had law. Essay left him, and no sign of cave or opening, nor disturbance of the earth. Returning God thanks to find himself once more in the world, he made the best of his way home. When he got within his mother's door, the joy to see her and his weakness for want of sustenance made him so faint that he remained for a long time as dead. As soon as he recovered he related to his mother all that had happened to him, and they were both very vehement in their complaints of the cruel magician. Aladdin slept very soundly till late the next morning, when the first thing he said to his mother was that he wanted something to eat, and wished she would give him his breakfast. Alas! Child, said she, I have not a bit of bread to give you. You ate up all the provisions I had in the house yesterday, but I have a little cotton, which I have spun, I will go and sell it, and buy bread and something for our dinner. Mother, replied Aladdin, keep your cotton for another time. And give me the lamp I brought home with me yesterday, I will go and sell it, and the money I shall get for it will serve both for breakfast and dinner, and perhaps supper too. Aladdin's mother took the lamp and said to her son, Here it is, but it is very dirty. If it was a little cleaner I believe it would bring something more. She took some fine sand and water to clean it, but had no sooner begun to rub it than in an instant a hideous genie of gigantic size appeared before her, and said to her in a voice of thunder, What wouldst thou have? I am ready to obey thee as thy slave, and the slave of all those who have that lamp in their hands, I and the other slaves of the lamp. Aladdin's mother, terrified at the sight of the genie, fainted, when Aladdin, who had seen such a phantom in the cavern, snatched the lamp out of his mother's hand, and said to the genie boldly, I am hungry, bring me something to eat. The genie disappeared immediately, and in an instant returned with a large silver tray, holding twelve covered dishes of the same metal, which contained the most delicious viands, six large white bread cakes on two plates, two flagons of wine, and two silver cups. All these he placed upon a carpet, and disappeared, this was done before Aladdin's mother recovered from her swoon. Aladdin had fetched some water and sprinkled it in her face to recover her. Whether that or the smell of the meat affected her cure, it was not long before she came to herself. Mother said Aladdin, be not afraid, get up and eat, here is what will put you in heart, and at the same time satisfy my extreme hunger.